Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Finally, it has turned colder in all parts of the UK, but does that set the theme for the next two weeks or not? I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The sequence runs from 18 GMT Wednesday the 5th. At the outset, there are a few wintry showers near to the east coast of Britain, but this ridge of high pressure is bringing a lot of dry weather and it will lead to a very sharp frost. But things quickly change. If we look out into the Atlantic, weather fronts are making their way towards the UK and they quickly spread eastwards, bringing a period of rain preceded by sleet and snow in the, to the northern half of the UK. Then showery conditions return and it becomes quite cold again. But by Saturday the 8th, a, a period of wet and windy weather looks like pushing eastwards or southeastwards across all parts of the UK. There could well be some heavy bursts of rain. The timing is still a little uncertain. But Saturday afternoon, perhaps in central and eastern parts of Britain, may be particularly wet. Showery conditions then return once more from the west. But as we go through the later stages of this sequence, you'll see that high pressure begins to build from the south and that could well become very influential indeed. By Wednesday the 12th, on this animation, the Atlantic flow bringing cloudier conditions with outbreaks of rain is increasingly becoming restricted to the northern half of the UK with that high pressure keeping things drier in southern and central regions. So quite a lot going on there. I'll come back to the short term just to look at that band of wet weather which moves eastwards across the UK uh, through Thursday. The sequence here is generated using data from the uh, UK Met Office UK V model. It starts from uh, 03 GMT on Thursday V6. So it's mostly dry at this point, but if we look out to the west, here's the rain. And if we watch what happens as it moves eastwards, the pink shading there indicates sleet or snow. So there's a period of snow, mostly across the northern half of the UK, perhaps into central areas over high ground for a time. But there is some milder air associated with that weather front. So the snow will be turning back to rain. Then as it clears away, colder air returns from the west. In terms of the snow depths, well, here's the chart which shows the UKV forecast. So 14 GMT, Thursday the 6th. This is in centimetres. A little bit of snow cover over high ground in Wales. Then into northern England, I guess over the Pennines particularly and over the Scottish high ground there, the red and yellow, uh, red and yellow shading indicating substantial accumulations. I mentioned the snow turning back to rain, and I can just quickly uh, give a little bit more detail about why that happens using these air uh, mass temperature charts. Again from the UKV model, here we are, 03 GMT, Thursday the 6th. The blue shading over most of the UK, is indicating cold air. Then as that front moves in, it turns to sleet or snow on its leading edge. But as I say, there's milder air associated with it. This is 15 GMT on Thursday the 6th. The blues have now been replaced by greens over central parts of Britain, most, most of the UK in fact. But if we look out to the west, there's blue shading again, so there's colder air returning. And by 21 GMT on the same day, that cold air is returning to most parts of the country. So it's a very mixed picture indeed through that first week. Later on, as I said, there are indications of high pressure building from the south. So I can just bring up a couple of jet stream charts to show that. This is on Monday the 10th of uh, January. At this point, the high pressure is just starting to nudge northwards. Jet stream here over western and northwestern parts of the UK. Moving forwards to Wednesday the 12th, this stage for jet streams further north as high pressure begins to become increasingly influential. So a significant change taking place later on according to this sequence. Just to quickly take a look at the temperature charts, the two meter ones that we experienced down at the ground level, later on through this first week. So Monday the 10th of January, it's milder 
after the predominantly cold weather through the first few days, that high pressure begins to build up from the south and initially at least it leads to milder temperatures. Uh, double figures, 11s, perhaps 12 Celsius, is 13 there in the southwest on Monday the 10th, still somewhat cooler as you head northwards. Then by Wednesday, that high pressure perhaps allowing temperatures to start dropping once again, particularly in southern and central regions. This is 06 GMT and it's showing minimum forecast temperatures, ones and twos. So there could start to be a frost risk in southern and central regions by this point. In the afternoon, sevens, eights in southern and central Britain, it's still somewhat milder as you go northwards into Scotland in particular, tens there in the northeast. And that's because the GFS, which this uh, animation and these charts were based upon, has a high pressure building northwards and calmer conditions are developing in southern and central regions with the Atlantic flow being cut off. So by this point, temperatures are starting to dip back down. But there is a good deal of uncertainty about the rate at which that high pressure will be building northwards. The MOGREPS temperature chart also shows a similar pattern. Initially, it's quite cold. This, this graph is for London. You can see maximums in single figures around five Celsius. Then it becomes a little bit milder, then it gets colder again. But later on, from about the 8th of January, more of the individual runs in the ensemble are bringing in milder conditions, at least for a time. There is perhaps a suggestion here as well that by around the 11th or the 12th of January, there will be a trend downwards beginning to emerge once again, perhaps as more of the runs in the ensemble build at high pressure northwards, like the GFS is suggesting. In terms of rainfall, again, these charts are from the GFS, uh, days not to five accumulated on the left, days not to 10 on the right. The Key point here is, as has often been the case recently, the wettest conditions are in the west of the UK, driest in the south and the east. The other thing here to note is that in central and eastern Britain, the days 0 to 5 and days 0 to 10 totals are very similar. So it's suggesting that in those regions, most of the rain will be falling during the first five days. Then between days five and 10, that high pressure building from the south starts to become dominant. The rain risk becoming increasingly confined to the west and particularly the northwest. You can see that the uh, chart on the right has higher rainfall totals, significantly higher in western Scotland than the one on the left does, therefore indicating the ongoing chance of rain in the northwest of UK later on. So it's a big change potentially towards the end of the first week if the GFS is right with that high pressure building up. Do the other deterministic models go for a similar evolution? Just as a reminder, here is the GFS, Wednesday the 12th of January, high pressure nudging northwards. Next, the Canadian model, similar story. German icon model, Perhaps on high pressure, not quite as far north, I think, but it's a very similar pattern. The uh, European ECM model, same story again. And finally, the UK Met Office this global model, high pressure also becoming increasingly influential. Very good agreement there. Strong support for a transition to take place in the weather towards the end of the first week. Uh, the risk of rain increasingly becoming confined to the north, particularly the northwest, drier in southern and central regions, and temperatures will be trending upwards for a time, but maybe, just maybe starting to dip again by this point as high pressure uh, calms things down in southern and central regions and possibly allows an inversion to start developing. But what about week two of a forecast period. At this range, of course, all, all about, it's all about trends and probabilities rather than specifics, using the ensemble data to try and identify those. 
Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures across the top here are above the 30-year average. To begin with, that's the thick black line. The purple line is the ensemble mean. And the majority of runs are close to that ensemble mean and well above the thick black line. But later on, there's a clear downwards trend. So from about the 17th of January, a lot of those runs are dipping down below the 30-year average. That's quite an interesting turn of events. Now, in terms of rainfall across the bottom, it's a mostly dry picture. For virtually no spikes at the start of the second week. A few show up later. If you remember, those spikes indicate individual runs within the computer model that are forecasting rain at that given time. Or, at this time of year, of course, it could be snow. An indicator is the snow row, but you'll see the values there through the second week remain low. But just ticking up a little towards the end, uh, a value of 7 out of 33 is reached on around the 20th of January. Going up to Glasgow, the air temperature profile is actually very similar. It's above average through the first few days, then most of the runs dip below the thick black line. So a cooling trend here as well. In terms of rain, well, there are more spikes showing on this plot than there were on the London one. That fits in with what I was talking about with rain increasingly becoming restricted to the northwest of the UK. But it's not overly wet for the time of the year. In fact, there could be a reasonable amount of dry weather even in the northwest of the UK through the second week if this is correct. In terms of snow, well, the snow rose a little bit higher than it was on the London chart, but it only reaches a top score of 11, so approximately a 33% chance of snow falling. And as I always emphasize, remember that the snow row does not indicate accumulating snow. It could just be a few flakes of snow mixed in with the rain. Looking at the two meter temperature data table, so back down to the values that we experience. This one's for London. It's a mild start for the second week. The light green is dominant, and most of those runs are above the average because they indicate 6 to 10 Celsius being forecast. And often the GEFS runs, even at this time of year, undershoot those maximum values by 1 Celsius or thereabouts. But Later on, the amount of dark green increases and it becomes the majority in the columns. Dark green indicates runs going for maximums of between 1 and 5 Celsius, therefore a little bit below average at least. It fits in with that cooling that shows up at the upper air uh, level, so it, it is being reflected down at the surface. Colder air aloft and lower temperatures developing at the ground level in the south. Going up to Glasgow, it's a very similar pattern. Mild to begin with, in fact the light green is dominant here too, and in the northwest of the UK that is very much above the average for this time of the year. But later on, the dark green becomes the majority in these columns, and a little bit of blue starts to show up. Those are runs forecasting maximums of 0 Celsius to minus 8 Celsius, the very cold ones. Looking at the uh, data table showing surface level pressure for York, once more the trend here is quite clear through the second week. Oranges are the, in the majority to begin with, those are runs going for 1026 to 1040 millibars surface pressure. That is way above the average, at this time of year, it's around 1,011. But later on, the amount of orange decreases, the amount of yellow increases, and there's also some green showing up and a little bit of blue. Those are runs going for more deeper areas of low pressure influencing things. But to summarize this, what it's suggesting is that pressure will continue to be higher than the average through the second week. There are signs of a change though, and I will look at that in a moment to see what could be happening. But here's the GEFS uh, surface level pressure mean for Saturday the 15th of January. At this point, high pressure really is dominant. You can see the 1030 millibar line cutting through 
um, Ireland and central or northern England, but the high pressure is extending its influence across all parts of the UK. Perhaps weather fronts from the west there just continuing to brush uh, the northwest of the United Kingdom. But as I say, it looks quite settled if this one's correct. And it is consistent with the European ensemble at the same time. This also has high pressure being centered somewhere close to Britain, maybe just to the south or maybe over the southern half of the country. Very, very consistent with the GEFS at the 10 day range. I said though that towards the end of the forecast period, there's that signal for pressure to begin falling, although it remains higher than the 30 year average. So what could that be pointing towards? To try and dig into a little more detail, I've brought up the postage stamp charts showing pressure patterns for the 18th of January. Now, the key thing is that a significant number of the individual uh, plots here, each one represents one of the runs in the ensemble, are shifting the high pressure to the west of the UK and perhaps even building it northwards. It's about 15 out of the... Um, 31 individual runs. That type of pattern would lead to an increased chance of colder conditions, at least for a time. It would be very difficult to say how lengthy any colder spell could be. It, if the high pressure uh, becomes centered somewhere close to Greenland, then the likelihood is that we could be looking at a cold period rather than a cold snap. But at this stage, the snaps are just showing the tendency of that high pressure to become centered somewhere to the west of the UK and the mid-Atlantic, indicating colder weather for at least a time. And I'm going to leave it at that for now. So to summarize the next two weeks, week one, it begins cold and there will be a sharp frost on Wednesday night. Then outbreaks of rain quickly spread eastwards and they are preceded by a period of snow in the north and perhaps over high ground in central regions. Cold and showery conditions then follow that rain and snow, but they don't last because another wet and windy period of weather moves across the UK during the first weekend. It then begins to turn milder as high pressure builds from the south and that also leads to more settled conditions with the rain increasingly becoming focused on the northwest. Week two, it looks like there will be a good deal of dry weather, particularly early on, although it could remain wetter in the northwest. Temperatures start off close to or slightly above the average. The Signal though is for it to probably begin turning colder later on and if high pressure does become centered further west that would lead to a greater chance of showery conditions developing and with the colder air in the mix some of those could be turning wintry. Well uh, there we have it. I think it's, it's a very mixed two weeks. Cold and rather unsettled early on. Then high pressure brings a quieter spell of weather. It turns milder for a time. Later on though, there is a signal for temperatures to begin dropping. And just for chance that we could be looking at a colder spell of weather during the middle part of the month onwards. A good deal of uncertainty about that though at this stage. Hopefully things will become clearer in the coming days. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful and enjoyed it, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks now. Bye.